Um, I have a question around um, women's right to choose and women's uh, access to contraception. So obviously in California, I don't think that's an issue, at least right now. But it's obviously a an issue in the states outside of California, a lot of states outside of California. So I'm wondering what you're doing as part of your um, appropriations committee to work with your colleagues in the Congress to ensure that women have a right to choose and women have a right to Sure, and I believe this is, I, I, there is a war on women, believe me, regardless of what Republicans say. And since I've been in Congress, I have seen more amendments come through, and the Appropriations Committee is where the fight takes place, because they try to write in legislation that would, in essence, get rid of Roe versus Wade, which would affect women in California. We have to fight against that. They've tried to defund Planned Parenthood. We fought against that. One of the issues now, unfortunately, is that women in the District of Columbia only, which are primarily minority women, don't have access through their own funds or their own, you know, the private funds, access to uh, abortion rights, which is terrible. And we're trying to reverse that. I had every member of, uh, of every African American woman of the Black Caucus write to our senators to tell them that when this bill gets over and please don't let them do this to the District of Columbia because oftentimes people forget that there are people who may not have a vote but these people deserve, these women deserve the same access that we have. And so what I see taking place now is every step of the way they're trying to get rid of contraception, they're trying to get rid of Planned Parenthood, they're trying to defund every women's health care program and initiative that uh, we have established over the years. It's, it's unbelievable what they're trying to do. And uh, they're trying to take us way back to those days that, and many young women think it always was this way. And I remember, you remember maybe the days that, of back alley abortions? Do you remember when contraceptives weren't available? And so we cannot allow uh, women's rights, and women's health care to be eroded. I'm working very hard each and every day to try to, first of all, stop these efforts in the appropriations but also to move forward to try to get some rational policies. Teen pregnancy, for example, comprehensive sex education. Do you know that under the welfare reform bill, abstinence only was the only type of program that federal funding could be used for? Now, with the high incidence of our teens with sexually transmitted infections, HIV and AIDS, we don't have any comprehensive sex education. Fortunately, California denied federal funding. So I have legislation, we worked through approach to get most of that policy lifted. Where now, if you want to teach comprehensive sex education to young people, you can receive federal funding for that. But up until a couple of years ago, that was not the case. And so this is a battle, this is a war, and we've got to win it. Because women uh, deserve equal justice. They deserve to, uh, you know, they deserve adequate health care, appropriate health care, and they should be the ones to decide what they want to do with their lives. Finally, let me just say I'm very concerned about the influence of religion right now in politics and in policy. I'm a person of faith, and I, do, I, I believe in the separation of church and state. Very, very serious. Very serious. And I see this being eroded each and every day. This is not a theocracy, my brothers and sisters. It is really not. This is a democracy. And so we should not allow religion to drive public policy. And it's very scary.